So the, Jonathan Carl has a bunch of stuff. He's got that yeah. long piece in the Atlantic about John McEntee, uh, you know, the 29-year-old wonder kind, not wonder kind, uh, <laughs> who was pushing everybody around, including writing this long memo uh, about uh, firing Mark Esper, the Secretary of Defense. And, and Jonathan Carl actually has a, put out a copy of it. It's really amazing. Uh, and what, a, what an insight into the Trump White House, what really mattered. I mean, the Trump lists among Esper's sins against Trump that he barred the Confederate flag on military bases. He opposed the president's direction to utilize American forces to put down riots. Um, he focused the department on Russia. Hmm. He was, and listen to this, actively pushing for diversity and inclusion. Uh, so all of these things are, are among the things that were the sins that uh, Johnny McEntee said, you know, warned at firing the Secretary of Defense, who was in fact fired on November 9th, 2020, a few days after the president was defeated for re-election. So once yeah, again, we're getting I, a little bit more insight into just how warped that White House was. Yeah, and what they wanted. I mean, again, thank God, you know, that like uh, Millie, who I have, I have plenty of complaints mm -hmm. about, and those folks were in there. And you, you looked at that, it was like written on crayon, like the three-point list of what your instructions was. It was like, get us out of Afghanistan, out of Germany, end Germany war, out of Africa. Like that was the yeah. <laughs> temporary defense secretary's, you know, instructions from this 29-year-old brat. I think that if, if folks haven't read that Atlantic article, I told Carl this. Um, I, in, for, in some ways, I think it was the best um, excerpt I've read um, or chapter I've read from all the various Trump books because really? – yeah, because here's why. That's you why. know, we get into all of the craziness with Trump and every, but but like at its heart, this McEntee story is is what this is what the administration is all about, and, and, and to think about having him come back again, I, I think it's the most it's the most illuminating because because it's just about these petty insecurities of this man, like like Johnny McEntee was a backup quarterback at Connecticut, which is why Trump likes him. He looks mm -hmm. the part. Uh, he went viral on, 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 on YouTube for doing some trick throws. That was his claim to fame before he got on the Trump campaign. And he, he gets into the White House. He gets fired because he, he, he fucked up his taxes because of his gambling debts. Okay. And, yeah. and, and then in the last year, Trump brings this guy back who has no, no skills, no expertise. He puts him in top of the, in, in charge of the biggest HR department, the most important HR department in the entire world, the, the U S governments. And, and, uh, and he basically instructs him to sniff out rats like uh, like the East German Stasi, I, you know, it's, it was reminiscent of if the great. There's this great show called Deutschland. I highly recommend to people. It's like kind of about the East German Stasi, and, and it's like, uh, you know, sniff out the never Trumper. They're three and a half years into the administration. They're in the middle of a pandemic. Trump has this 29 year old France star trying to sniff out anybody that that, that might have liked a tweet that 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 it wasn't favorable to Trump. He hires a whole new department. There's a 20-year-old girl in it named Cameron something who is a TikTok star who is in charge of external well, of affairs for the United States government. He hires a bunch of hot chicks and ugly dudes that he can push around. <laughs> and and then he and then he inserts these people as the White House liaison into the departments, people that are doing work. There's this 25-year-old bro uh, that that is that is you know acting like he's the boss of the Department of Homeland Security, and he, he's storming around the Homeland Security Department, bossing around Chad Wolf, who also had no yeah, um, business being obligated. You know what I mean? Then it's same thing at the Department of Justice. Why aren't you? Why aren't you being you know uh, 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 asking Bill Barr why you know he's looking into Durham more and all this sort of stuff? If, if we get Trump back, like the the Carl article. Is is the this sort of uh, the absurd the absurd putsch right? It's both right. It is both anti democratic and ridiculous, and it would be that again. And and, and you just have these really absurd characters that that you know are are drunk with power with within the White House because um you know because that that's the so, kind of person that Trump attracts. Probably Johnny McEntee would end up being the chief of staff and you know Richard Grinnell would end up being secretary mm -hmm. of state. We should we actually should put together what the cabinet would look like. My pillow guy would be attorney general. Um no no, I Rudy Giuliani would be attorney general, right? My pillow guy would be what secretary I mean, of the treasury. <laughs> you laugh now. Right. Okay. 
You laugh because like, it's so painful now. These, these is, these are the people that were left. I mean, you know, I, we're in the, we're in the middle of a century long crisis, and it's John, it is Johnny McEntee, the, the dude who's, who like lost all his money playing online poker, a backup college quarterback who is like, who's like managing who is getting hired at the FDA and HHS, right? I mean, like this, it's, it's preposterous. 